Hi everyone, welcome back. Like you know, in this set of series, I'm going to discuss the pricing of futures and forwards. Now I run the risk of actually assuming that you already know what futures and forwards are. And just for my satisfaction, and also to ensure that you are not completely blanked out, I'm just going to spend the next two to three minutes trying to explain what futures and forwards actually, or how they actually work. All right, let, so first thing that I want you to know is, in case of forwards and futures, you always have an underlying, all right? In, in all my examples, I will try to first initially start off the conversation by assuming that the underlying is actually an equity share, but the underlying could actually be anything. It could be an equity, it could be commodity, it could be bonds, it could be anything else as well. It could be foreign exchange also or interest rate, all right? But for the purpose of communication, I'm assuming that the underlying is actually an equity share, let's say of that of reliance. Also, the second thing that I want you to notice each equity forward contract or futures contract is going to have a tenor, all right? There, there can be a one month forward contract, there can be a two month forward contract or a three month forward contract or a seven month, eight month, nine month, 12 months, 24 months of any time frame. all right? So every forward contract has an underlying, which I'm assuming to be an equity share and every forward contract has an associated tenor with it, all right? Now, if I buy a one month uh, forward contract on Reliance, what that basically means is, I am entering into an agreement whereby I am committing myself, I am obligating myself to buy one share of reliance after a period of one month at a price which is going to be predetermined today itself. All right. If I if I am buying a one month forward contract right now, it basically means I am entering into an agreement to buy one share of reliance after a period of one month. All right. If it was a three month forward contract, then that agreement would be to buy reliance share after a period of three months at a price which is going to be determined today itself. And that price is going to, is what we refer to as the forward price or the futures price. All right, let us say hypothetically that the forward price is let's say 2100. Now, if I am buying a one month forward contract at 2100, it basically means that after one month, I will pay to the opposite party 2100 and I will receive one share of reliance. Now that payment of 2100 will be done irrespective of what the share price of Reliance is at the end of one month. Whether Reliance share price is 2,700 or whether the share price of Reliance is 1,500 or 1,000, I am forced because I've entered into an agreement to actually pay him 2,100 irrespective of what the share price of Reliance actually is. And I will then receive a sh one share of Reliance. All right, now if you actually clearly give it a thought, obviously the buyer of the forward contract is actually kind of entering into an upside betting. The reason I'm saying upside betting is because he stands to gain if the share price of Reliance is greater than 2100 as it after the end of one month and he stands to lose if the share price of Reliance is less than 2100 after one month. All right, because if, at, at, let's say at, the, at t equal to one, the share price of Reliance is 2400. Then what's actually going to happen is the buyer of the forward contract is paying 2100 and he's receiving a share which is worth 2,400 and therefore his gain is actually 300 rupees. And similarly, if the share price of Reliance falls to let's say 1,500, then he's actually paying 2,100 at t equal to one and he's only receiving a share of Reliance which is worth 1,500, which means he's actually losing out 600. Therefore, buying a forward contract is, or buying a futures contract is like upside betting. Similarly, selling a forward contract is nothing but an agreement to actually, whenever I use the word forward, please consider it to be synonymous with futures, all right? So whenever I'm selling a one month forward contract, let's say at 2100, it basically means that I am entering into an agreement to sell one share of Reliance after a period of one month at the price of 2100, which is determined at t equal to zero. I am not going to determine the price at t equal to one. I am determining the price at t equal to zero itself. And I'm saying that irrespective of what the price of Reliance is after one month, I will receive only 2100 and I will deliver the share to you. Now, if you think, give it a thought, the, the seller of the forward contract is actually entering into a downside betting. He stands to gain if the share price of Reliance falls below 2100 and he stands to lose if the share price exceeds 2100. Now, if you, if you just, to, just to elaborate that, what's actually going to happen is if let's say the share price of Reliance is, is uh, 1000 at t equal to one. 
So he ha- actually has a share of Reliance which is worth only thousand. He is actually delivering the share which is worth thousand, but he is actually receiving two thousand one hundred rupees as the selling price of it, and therefore his gain is eleven hundred. Similarly, you can also imagine what's actually going to happen if the share price exceeds two thousand one hundred, and you can calculate the loss that the forward seller is actually going to incur. All right. Now another point that I would like to remind you is. each forward contract of different months is obviously going to have a different price all right one month forward contract in my example i took the price as 2100 now the three month forward contract or the five month forward contract or six month forward contract will obviously not have the same price as that of 2100 each forward contract will actually have a different price based on the different maturity all right and another very obvious thing is the one month forward contract on reliance the price of one month forward contract on reliance is not going to be equal to one month forward price of infosys or tcs or any other share as as the underlying keeps changing obviously the forward price will keep changing also as the tenor keeps changing the forward price will keep changing then now this entire set of series at least the first part of it the pricing of forwards is nothing but how do we actually calculate that 2100 now for the purpose of explaining i just took 2100 as a random number that came to my mouth but now in the remaining set of lectures where we are going to discuss about pricing of forwards and futures we are actually going to focus on how that 2100 is actually being going to be calculated let me just share my screen all right so now on the screen you've got the website of nsc and within nsc i am actually in the equity derivative segment all right i have clicked on the equity derivative segment or no maybe i am actually in the equity stock segment what i am actually doing is i'm going to equity derivatives i have clicked on infosys it comes as not a valid contract which is fine that's okay but here if you actually look at it i am into stock derivatives instrument type we have stock futures and stock options i am selecting stock futures and then we have got symbol all right and i have chosen infosys and then we have different expiry dates now this since we are see, looking at futures we have only three expiry dates that are traded on exchange but for forwards you can have any um, any number of months as expi- uh, i mean you can have any date as an expiry date you can have a 12 month forward also you can have a 24 month forward also but for the purpose of futures since they traded on an exchange you have only three month futures all right so now i'm just clicking randomly on 30th of december 2021 and i'm clicking on get data now what you see on screen is 1745.30 this is the futures price all right so if by chance of course i'm i'm looking at it on a weekend so this price is not changing this price is that of 3rd december it's as of as at 3rd december 2021 at 3:30 pm all right so what does this 1745.30 mean if i buy the if i buy uh, infosys futures expiring on 30th of december 2021 at 1745 it basically means that i have entered into an agreement to actually pay 1745.30 to the other party to the uh, to the counter party and wherein i'm go- and wherein i'm going to pay 1745 and i will be receiving one share of infosys all right where i'm buying of 30 on thir- and this will actually happen on the 30th of december 2021 now if i just change the expiry date let's say to 24th of february 2022 and i hit on get data the price of it of this is 1759 the 1759 let us say this time i'm selling futures i'm selling infosys futures expiring on 24th of february 2022 what does that mean it means that on 24th of february 2022 i am obligated i have entered into an agreement which means i'm obligated to deliver one share because i've actually sold the futures i over here i'm supposed to deliver the share and i am going to then receive 1759 rupees as the selling price irrespective of what the actual share price is at the end of february all right whether the share price of infosys is 2000 or whether the share price of infosys is zero i will receive 1759 which is a price which has been agreed today all right now what you are actually seeing on screen is the actual forward price of futures price or the actual market price of the forward and future now the market price is cannot be calculated using a formula because the market price is determined based on forces of demand and supply 
all right it's purely determined on the basis of demand and supply and demand and supply are driven by multiple factors all right so over here this 1759 cannot be calculated using a particular formula all right so we have within while calculating the for when i said that we're going to price a forward contract or we're going to calculate the price of a forward and futures contract price can actually be of two types one is the theoretical value the other is the actual market price the actual market price can never be calculated using a formula that's driven by forces of demand and supply. If you actually look at the bottom, you have an order book, just like how you have an order book of shares. You also have an order book of uh, forwards and futures where you have the number of people who are ready to buy Infosys futures and the number of people who are willing to sell Infosys futures. Now, if people, if the number of people who are ready to buy is actually going up, which means that the demand is going up, then this 1759 will no longer stay at 1759. It will start going upwards towards, let's say, 1760 or 1770. If the selling pressure of Reliance is high, or if the selling pressure is of Infosys is high, then what's going to happen is this futures is no longer going to trade at 1759, but it will start trading at levels of 1750 or 1740. Now here itself, you're actually able to see that the Infosys uh, futures of 20, expiring on 24th Feb, it opened at 1784, which means the first contract that was entered on the 3rd of December for 24th February 2022 futures was at 1784, which means somebody had actually agreed to buy or sell one particular share of Infosys at 1784. The first trade had was for 1784. It reached the high of 18, not two in between. So at some point during between 9:15 and 3:30, there was some trade that actually took place where one party agreed to buy or sell at 1802. For one share of Infosys, he agreed to buy or sell at 1802 on 24th of February 2022. It reached the low of 1754 and it closed at 1756.70. Now, the close price is slightly different from this because this is the close is generally a weighted average, whereas this is probably the last traded price. All right. Anyways, so the 1759 is actually the market price and this is purely determined on the basis of forces of demand and supply. We are not going to find out a formula for calculating this market price of the forward contract. What we are actually going to find out is the theoretical value or the theoretical price of the forward contract. All right, what I internally refer to as theoretical forward price. All right, remember, just like how in shares, you have something called as an intrinsic value and you have something called as the market price of the share. The intrinsic value is the value that you are calculating based on the fundamentals of the company. All right, you are looking at the fundamentals of the company, seeing what cash flows the company is able to generate, seeing what the growth rates are and what the risk is of the company, and you are determining an intrinsic value. What an intrinsic value essentially means is this is the should be value. This is the value at which it is supposed to trade. All right, so intrinsic value is nothing but the true underlying worth of it, true underlying worth of any particular share or whatever. All right, whereas the market price is not going to be equal to intrinsic value always, the market price can be different from the intrinsic value because the market price is purely determined by forces of demand and supply. Now, that demand and supply, of course, is going to be driven by a lot of other factors like the demand and supply. The first thing that's going to determine the demand and supply is obviously the fundamentals of the company. The fundamentals which you considered for the cal purpose of calculating intrinsic value are also considered for the purpose of determining the market price. But there are other factors also that come into picture, mainly the situational influences or the behavioral biases. All right, all your emotional, uh, all your emotions get ca captured through in the form of demand and supply, and the market price may deviate from the intrinsic value. And when the market price deviates from the intrinsic va value, you take decisions of either buying the share or selling the share. Same is the case with what you actually did in bond valuation. You calculate the intrinsic value and if the actual market price of the uh, of the bond is any different from the intrinsic value, you are actually going to either buy the bond or sell the bond. Similarly, in futures and forwards also, you have something called as, we don't refer to it as intrinsic value, you have something called as the theoretical forward price and you have something called as the actual market price. And if the actual market price differs from theoretical forward price, here we do not talk about buying and selling of forwards, which you also can do. But if the actual market price is different from the theoretical forward price, we are going to talk about how you can make an arbitrage profit. Arbitrage profit is nothing but you're able to make a riskless profit, all right? Which means you're, without taking any risk, you're actually able to generate some profit for yourself. And that is the reason we call it as arbitrage, all right? In case of shares and bonds, when the intrinsic value and the market price are not different, 
we decide to buy or sell the bond, we don't really say that there is an arbitrage opportunity. Whereas in case of equity forwards and futures, because these are derivatives, because there is an underlying to this to these forwards and futures, there is a possibility to make an arbitrage. If the forward theoretical forward price is not going to be equal to the actual market price, there is going to be an arbitrage opportunity. Now, in the remaining set of sessions, like I mentioned, we are not going to actually calculate the market price of the forward contract because the market price is something which you see on the trading screen and it's something that cannot be calculated using a formula. What we are actually going to calculate is the theoretical forward price or uh, theoretical price of the forwards and future contracts. Okay, they can only be formulated by finding out the intrinsic value of share or intrinsic value of a bond. And similarly, we are we are going to find out the theoretical value of the forward, theoretical price of the forward contracts and future contracts. Just and similarly, you are not going to have any formula to calculate the market price of share or bond. Just like how you do not have any formula to calculate the market price of share or bond, you're also not going to have a formula to calculate the market price of the forwards and futures. All right. So just have these uh, stuff in your background. We just saw what a forward and future is. What it's an upside betting and a downside betting for a person buying and selling the share respectively. And the second thing that we saw was the futures price, which is determined today, can have either a market. There are two. I mean, there are two uh, types of prices. One is the theoretical price, which means the should be price, and two, we have the market price. And what we are actually going to discuss in the remaining part of the sessions is the should be price or the theoretical price of the forward contract or the futures contract. All right, that's it for the session, guys. Bye.